We're back then with another beginner's guide video for Marvel Future Revolution. In this series of videos we look at the various different heroes in the game and we cover really everything you need to know about them. Now the game has just launched globally. I have however been playing it for the last two months or so via the soft launch version. I have all heroes at level 100 and I've spent a lot of time on individual heroes as well. Now in this video what will we actually be covering? We start off with an overview first. This is to give you a good idea of how the hero actually plays and that way you can see if you're interested and you want to find out more. If you do, we move on to the hero's potential. This is specific stats they can actually spec into. We have the specialization next. This is unlocked towards the end game and it can make your character extremely powerful. We then have a look at some of the more interesting skills for the character in question and then we'll move on to outfits, battle badges and mega cards and I'll talk about which ones would actually work well on the character we're reviewing. And then finishing up we have a few fun build options to show off that I've been playing around with as well. Now the character of course is Black Widow, a pretty awesome character in this game. So let's jump in and let's start off with the overview. Black Widow then is a hybrid character so she can be played as melee, ranged or a mixture of both. She gets access to all these abilities through a mix of guns, gadgets and stealth so they really nailed how Black Widow should actually feel. Now she also has access to a ton of crowd control in her kit including bleed, blind, poison, shock, stun, knockback and even a Mortal Kombat style scorpion get over here moves. I think she possibly has the widest range of crowd control in the game. She also has exceptionally high burst damage through the range side of things so with this she excels in both PvE and PvP and many people in the game would agree at the moment that she's possibly the strongest hero in the game as well. So that is a quick introduction to Black Widow. Let's now jump in and let's talk about the potential that's available on her. Potential then is a selection of character specific stats that you can actually invest in. Now when you reach level 100 on a hero, you will have only completed about a third of the system and then you run out of the currency and it comes in a lot slower. So you have to be really careful where you actually invest this. Now this is the in-game UI, it's not the easiest to see everything you actually get from this. So I've actually made it into an infographic, so let's jump over to that. We have all the different stats laid out here but the most important part is the total at the bottom so you can see that heroes have access to attack, defence and hit points. I would invest in hit points and attack for Black Widow first. After that you've got more specific stats you can actually go for and these are actually all really great in different ways. So you have accuracy rate. With a high accuracy rate you'll be more likely to hit an enemy who has a high dodge rate. So if you're going up against Spidey for example in PvP you'll be more likely to hit him with a high accuracy rate. So this is great for PvP orientated players. You've then got crit rate, very self explanatory there. You have crit damage which is awesome on her. The reason being with her ultimate ability after you cast it the next skill that you actually use will be a guaranteed crit. So this works exceptionally well alongside crit damage. Go for this as soon as you can get it and look to stack it through your cores and your bonus options on your outfits and so on as well. And then you have ultimate skill recovery. This is nice on her. I wouldn't say it's essential the same way it is on, for example, someone like Captain Marvel. But it's certainly nice to get that ult available quicker so you can go into stealth and then you can do your, your guaranteed crit attack. We're going to talk about the ultimate later on in the video as well. Now the next section actually will be the specialisations. Specialisations then are unlocked at level 70. You can only equip four of them at a time but they are exceptionally powerful. They're probably even build changing on most heroes and with this system as well you get the currency via your end game raids. So the raids are time gated which means investing in these nodes are time gated as well. So you want to make sure you go for the, the best ones as quickly as you can. Now as always I've got an infographic of this section so let's jump over to that. What we'll do with this section then we'll break down the, the various different specialisations and I'll let you know if I think they're actually worth investing in. The first tree is probably the weakest because it is a melee side of things and Black Widow really excels with the range side of things. When we show off the skills in a moment you'll see why that's the case. But the melee tree here is martial arts so you have secretive spy. Decreases damage received from nearby enemies by 18%. If you are running a melee build this would be nice but I can't really recommend you run a melee build on her. You have gear inspection next. Increases guard damage of close quarters combat class skill by 23%. That's a decent amount but once again I can't really recommend the melee setup. 
Receiving intel is next, this one's really nice on melee or range. So this one here increases damage dealt to targets with 50% hit point or below by 25%. That's a whopping amount, it really is. So I would strongly recommend that one. We have Sharp Mind Up next, increases PvP damage by 29% for 10 seconds when using a close quarters combat class skill. The cooldown is 15 seconds, meaning you get an additional 30% damage in PvP after using one of these skills. And with it being 10 seconds, the cooldown being 15 seconds, that's around about 66% uptime. That's actually really pretty amazing. Next up we have the intelligence train, you've got some amazing specialisations within this. The first one's the weakest by far, it's Acrobat. Increases dodge skill gauge recovery speed by 52.5% when your hit points are 30% and below. It's just far too situational as much as that is a nice buff. The remaining three ones we have are amazing. So the first one is Subdue, increases damage dealt to a mobile or debuff targets by 30%. In the overview we talked about all the various different ways she actually has for applying debuffs so it's really easy to get that extra 30% damage. You have Improvising Next, decreases remaining cooldown of all skills by 2 seconds when using a espionage devices class skill. You can spam these skills to get the cooldown on your sniper shot way down. We have Disguise Tactics to finish off this tree. With this one, vanish for 2 seconds and recover by 30% of maximum hit point upon sustaining fatal damage. Cooldown of five minutes this works in the vast majority of modes or work in your pvp mode such as your dimensional duel so if you're doing a 1v1 you can get a res in that which is really exceptionally good final tree we have is a firearms tree so you've got fatal strike increases max critical damage by 50 percent now with this here i've not actually tested it because it's really hard to fill out these nodes to test but in a previous video we had spider-man who had a similar node that was increased max dodge rate by 15%. Now the way that worked, you only got that 15% if Spider-Man was at the max dodge rate, which is actually 100%. So just as an example, if you were at 50% dodge, if you invested in it, you would get nothing. If you were at 100% dodge and invested in it, you would get 115. This sounds like it works the same way. I don't know what the max critical damage rate is, but I wouldn't say this is worthwhile using at all. It's, it's certainly very risky to go for. And if I do find out more information on it, then I will add a pinned post with more info there. But for now, I would avoid this one. The next one is Operation Breakthrough. It increases critical damage by 27.5% upon equipping two deadly aim class skills. This is amazing. You can see this is different from the one above because the one above says max critical damage, whereas this is just critical damage. So that will apply it on regardless what your crit damage actually is. Red Room Assassin is next, applies bleed effect to enemy for 5 seconds with the next attack after 3 critical hits, cooldown of 15 seconds. This is actually a nice way to apply the, the debuff to get the extra 30% damage from Subdue if you don't actually have another, another way of applying debuffs, but you really should with all the various ones she has access to. Finishing up we have Custom Attacks, so this one increases damage dealt to a single target by 21%. So you can see with some of these options there, you can really ramp your damage absolutely through the roof. Now, in regards to the damage and how you actually do it, let's look at some of the more interesting skills on her now. Heroes then have access to 32 different abilities, not including their basic and ultimate. I'm not going to go over all of them because it would be a video in itself. Instead, I've selected an interesting ability from each of the eight different trees to show off a different aspect of the kit that's available for Black Widow. The first one we're showing off, I'm showing this off because it has bleed. So with bleed, it decreases hit point recovery by 50% for 7 seconds. Hit point recovery is where in and out of combat every 10 seconds you regenerate a small amount of health. Because it's a small amount of health personally, I don't think bleed is that useful a debuff, but there it is there anyway. Next one we have, we have the sniper shot that we've talked about a fair amount. With this you'll shred enemies in PvP and you'll shred bosses in PvE as well. So this is really incredible. This is probably the most important aspect of Black Widow in this ability. We then have Trap Expert. This allows us to see the poison debuff. Black Widow is the only character at the moment that's got this and this is really nice in PvP. Reduces stamina recovery by 50% for 8 seconds. So if your enemy can't reduce stamina then they can't actually cast a hard hitting skills and they'll be stuck using their basic. So that's really pretty awesome. Next up we have the ability we talked about. This was the Mortal Kombat Scorpion get over here type ability. I don't believe any other character has a mechanic such as this. I'm not sure how useful it is on Black Widow, a character where I would actually rather keep the enemy at range, but it's nice to see a unique ability there. 
Explosive Expert is up next. This one here it burns when the skill lands, and with this debuff, increases damage received by 20% for 6 seconds. So apply a burn on an enemy, fire off your sniper rifle, use some of the specialisations we were talking about, especially the one where you get an extra 30% damage when there's a debuff on them. Your damage numbers will be through the roof. Now, we then have another debuff to show off. This one is Shock. So with this, it decreases attack by 25% for 6 seconds. This can be quite nice on bosses, ones that have perhaps got one shot moves. We then have Widow's Sting. This is a nice alternative to the sniper shot. It does a little bit less damage, but a lot of people in PvP are now able to dodge the sniper shot. It won't, they won't really be dodging when it comes to PvE. Bosses don't have the, the, the brain power to actually dodge your sniper shot, but players in PvP can, so this can be a nice alternative to use. We finish up the skills here with Master Spy, this particular one. I'm showing it off just because it's got a knockdown when the skill lands there. We've not seen a knockdown in our kit yet. Now, for the ultimate ability, this is the one you cast before doing your hard-hitting skills, so you'll cast it before using your sniper shot. And with the ultimate ability, I believe it's actually three or four different charges. You can have it at a time, which is pretty amazing. So this one here increases damage by 33% when attacking while vanished, and the next attack will be a guaranteed crit hit. That's why your crit damage was so important on her. So that's some of the skills available on her to give you a good idea of how she actually plays. Let's now talk about the battle badges. For the outfits here, your in-game goal will be to craft a regional set, but that will take a fair amount of time. So until you're actually able to craft that, you want to go for one of your non-regional sets and upgrade it. The one I would recommend would be Red Widow Outfit. You can see this one here has got a bonus to Firearm Expert. Your sniper shot is contained within Firearm Expert, so that's an awesome option to go for. In regards to your regional outfit, I would say you want to grind. It will be Midgardia Outfit. This one, once again, will be buffing your sniper shot, but it buffs the entire tree. It's the Deadly Aim Class tree that this one will buff. So that's the outfits, nice and simple there. Let's talk about the battle badges now. With the battle badges, you always start off by grinding your Maestro Blitz. This will give you your super villain set, so this is great for doing your Blitz and your Raid. In regards to the, the Dark Zone sets, you can actually get the Lord of the Desert. Could be nice on her. You'll bump her attack damage even higher. And then if you're going specifically for PvP, you've got the Lord of Juttenheim. And you've also got the Omega War battle badges that can drop as well. There, So they're the ones that I would recommend for her. The next section we'll check out will be the Omega cards. With these infographics here for the Mega Cards, we've split them into two. One has got your free-to-play set, another one has got your special cards you can only get within the store. This is more of a, a whale set, but in regards to the free-to-play sets, you can get some amazing ones for it. The ones that I would recommend would be Midgardia 4. You can see you've got nice stats that will drop alongside the cards, but your set bonus is great as well. It's crit damage and it's also crit rate. The one that I would probably say is the best free-to-play set for it would be Dark Zone 3. So this one's got villain damage, crit damage, Defense Pierce, Super Villain Damage, Attack and Total Damage as well. So your damage numbers would go through the roof when you have this full set equipped. Now let's check out the next one. With these cards then, next to the name I've noted how many special cards you actually need to complete the set. One can be difficult to get, two can be nigh on impossible unless you really do wail out. Now the set that I would recommend for Black Widow would be your Dark Zone 4. So with this one here, you get an attack, crit damage, guard damage increase, crit rate, hit rate, ultimate skill recovery, and then your set bonus is attack, defense pierce, and then PvP damage increase as well. So this would be a really amazing set on her. But good luck completing this one. Now that's all the mega cards. So what we'll actually do, we'll finish up the video now we're looking at some of the build options available on her. For this section here, we'll show off a PvE and a PvP build. Now these are not min-max builds where I've created spreadsheets to figure everything out. This is a beginner's guide. So these are just some fun builds to play around with while you're actually leveling them up and give you an idea of what direction to go in. Now the first one we look at is a PvE build. So it's a mixture of AoE and single targets. So you can take out both mobs and bosses. We've got a nice skill here to start off. It will knock down your mobs. You can then follow up by softening them up with this ability here. It's an AoE shock ability and it works as a dot as well. We then have this one here. This will apply burn when the skill lands. So this is when you're starting to go into a boss rotation here. You apply this to them so you get an extra 20% damage. You follow up with a snare move so they don't actually move. And then finishing up, you would have your sniper shot here. So that's what I would use in PvE. Let's have a little look at the PvP setup now. 
So we have quite a few changes from the PVE setup here. This ability is really nice because it actually breaks target lock on you, so the, the other player has to put the target lock on again and that wastes a split second for them. With this ability here, you can apply blind for three seconds, so they'll be less likely to hit you and the attack will actually miss. We then have the poison debuff, it reduces stamina recovery by 50% for 8 seconds, so with some builds you, you go up against this will completely cripple them if they don't have enough energy to actually cast their moves. We then have the snare ability that we were using for PvE as well, so it snares for 5 seconds. Once they're snared you can follow up with sniper shot, but I find in PvP this one's actually better because you don't have the large beam as a, an indication you're about to actually fire it off, whereas this one you'll fire it off quicker, so there's less likely that opponent will actually dodge out the way. So that's some fun build setups to play around with, and that is the end of the beginner's guide for everything you need to know about Black Widow. I've done guides for all the other characters, so if this has been helpful, feel free to check them out. If it has been helpful as well, please do take the time to hit the like, share and subscribe button. And thanks for tuning in, stay safe, and I'll see you all again soon.